urban legends again tonight and we are getting down to the the final episodes of urban legends as we've been doing this series now for quite a while which is yeah. it's incredible to me like how far it's come I don't um, know when we started in I January don't, I don't know when it when when it started either I I can't remember the first time that you said that you wanted to do it but we're on part 16 right now of urban legends in America and I am just uh, thrilled that we continue down and we've learned a lot I mean I personally I know you have learned a lot just from doing the research of the show because yes, yeah, she presents yeah. three to four of these on the show each time, but also she's looking at multiple of them every single time and going through and trying to find out which are the best possible urban legends to talk about, which ones, you know, you can really dive into and which ones kind of have some of them are literally just two them. sentences and they're really yeah. not worth even talking about. Right. Well, you had told me too, when you were doing the research for, I think it was this week's episode, you had done it and the, the information was all false. Like the building location was wrong. Some of the facts about the history was wrong and everything like that. And, yeah. you know, we like to have fun on this show, guys. We really do. We, so I didn't even want to present it. So right. I did like all this research on something it turned out not to be anything. I was like, well, forget about it. It was more right. true crimey and less urban legendy. Yeah. It turned out. So... No, it would have been fine either way. People just like hearing you tell stories, I can Mitra. Still talk about it. I have it all mm. written. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna, it, it's in your notes. I just didn't make the final no, cut for this right. particular episode, right? Yeah, something like that. All right. Maybe another time. Let's jump um, in. Where are we you're going? So next? weird. And my yes. dog's crying now because he's like, "Oh wait, you're recording. Let me go cry at the door." I think that your dog is the unofficial it? third member of the show. Yes, everybody can hear it. Everybody loves he's it. He's just a blind deaf old man dog he doesn't know yeah. what's going on i think you just explain explain to everybody that your, your dog is very old your dog is deaf but also blind and uh and 15 we should feel sorry for it it's a poodle right it's a toy poodle a toy poodle okay. black toy poodle because i only like black animals <laughs> I yeah, you yeah. <laughs> currently at Mitra's uh, zoo, she has a black dog and she has two black cats. Yeah. So one so. black dog died in yeah. October, Rocco, my Chihuahua. Mm -hmm. And then I had a black yeah. and white cat that yes. died a year before the uh, Chihuahua died. She yeah. died in October, too. They almost died one year apart, which is so weird. Never would have thought that was going to happen. That is so sad very sad so well let's get into it where are we headed where are we headed this week on urban legends i honestly i think your dog just wants to get in on the show i think that your dog just yeah wants he's to be a senile he doesn't know what's going on he'll wake yeah. up suddenly he doesn't know if it's night or day or what's going on mm -hmm. yeah so which states are we exploring this week we are doing rhode island massachusetts and vermont there's the show distraction <laughs> See those whites of his eye? That's yeah. His cataracts. Oh, but he's a sweet boy. Those of you who don't know what happened, we just took a quick break for Mitra's dog to do his thing. Nobody <laughs> would know. What do you mean for those of you who would know? Well, it's just going to be like a sudden cut. So I just wanted people to be prepared. But anyway, we're back. And what is which state are we going to first? We're going to do Rhode Island um so i'm all like flustered from the dog now okay. Yeah. okay is this rhode island yes yeah so in rhode island there is a prostitute vampire witch ghost that haunts hopkins mills historic district and foster rhode island it's like a hat trick i know hat it's like ghost everything you want they put in this one like put it all in it's all one person let's do it okay so the prostitute vampire witch is named dolly cole okay she was to have been a cross-dressing prostitute who lived in the woods she wore men's clothing or like to dress in men's clothing i thought it was the opposite for when you first said cross-dressing i thought it was going to be a, a man who wore women's clothing but I was that's what people always think with cross-dressing okay, but it yeah. goes the other way too okay so the town's people didn't like her of course they accused her of witchcraft and vampirism um, so some of the townspeople came up with the idea to burn her house down. 
because they oh, just wanted wonderful. her gone. So they're like, let's burn her house down. Those in so favor she, of angry mobs, say I. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So Dolly Cole survived the fire, but mm. unfortunately, she had a child who oh, did no. not survive the fire. God. So she ran and hid out in the woods after the fire, and she was there for a while, but she was eventually hunted down and killed, and she was 27 years old. Holy smokes. Yeah. So Dolly is said to haunt the area seeking revenge on the townspeople. Okay. Many people claim to have seen a woman in a white dress carrying a wooden bucket. And so okay. the assumption here is that this is the ghost of Dolly Cole. There's a few landmarks in the Hopkins Mill area that are named after Dolly Cole, like Dolly Cole Hill and Dolly Cole Brook. And you think like if they thought she was a prostitute, vampire witch cross-dressing and men's clothing why are they naming all these landmarks after her why I know, would they especially them if, after her? if they didn't like her all that much even even if she wasn't yeah. all those alleged nonsensical things uh besides the cross-dressing which is totally normal people do it all the time i think it's totally fine well um, upon further research yes i learned that Dolly Cole was a nickname. Dolly was a nickname for a woman oh. named Dorothy Cole. And she died in 1860 when she was 91, not 27. So, so I'm, conf I'm confused. Yes. So she was very much loved by the community. And that's basically what I named all these things after. So people are seeing something, they're seeing a ghost and they're yeah. getting confused that it must be Dolly because of all the landmarks nearby that are named after her. Like, oh, it must be this person because they're just hearing the landmark. Okay. It's in an area where the landmark is. So they're attributing it to that being her ghost. Yeah, yeah. But they are seeing a ghost, but this may be the ghost of a woman named Betsy Grayson. Okay. So okay. I did some research. She also died in 1860, the same year as Dolly Cole. So I think people have gotten this kind of mixed up. So she drowned at Dolly Cole Brook, okay. which I'm assuming at the time was not called Dolly Cole Brook. Uh, she was getting water in her bucket and she fell into the water and the current dragged her down. Yikes. And I'm guessing this is what people are seeing this uh, Betsy Grayson instead of, you know, the other woman because she died and she was well loved and they named things after her you know it's so, just like a, a crazy weird coincidence of like so many different like names of people and things that are happening all at once i don't know why they name if she was such a loved member of the community why are they cha changed her into a vampire prostitute witch i don't get it yeah, that's a very weird thing. Like to accuse somebody of being a witch is one thing because usually that is something that we've seen in society that's done to somebody who may or may not be like an outsider, somebody who lives on the outskirts of town that they just don't kind of understand and whatnot. But, you know, the vampire thing, like where's the basis for that? It was like, like people I have showing no up. Idea. I have right? I feel like people are legit seeing the ghost. And I think because it was by Dolly Cook, Cole Brook, they're like, oh, that must be Dolly Cole. That's why then the brook is named after her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's very crazy to me. The vampire thing is crazy. <laughs> like, were people showing know. up missing blood? Like, I don't know. And that's yeah. my dog crying again. He's back. My God. But I don't. I don't know why people accuse her of being. I don't know where the witch story comes from. I don't know where that even came from. But there really is a ghost there, and you, a lot of people have seen this woman with the the wooden bucket. Yeah. So if you want to yeah. go try to hunt a ghost down, go in the woods. I think it's totally fine. I think that you totally should do that. Everybody should. And bring a wooden bucket with you too, in case like it's like a thing where you have to and go that. to the brook and try to help her. She's yeah. never she's forever trying to get the water she couldn't get. Right, exactly. It's pretty sad. Go get a bucket of water and help her out. Come on, people, you can do it. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. All right. All right. So we're moving on now. We're on we're to our next state. Massachusetts, which right. we mentioned this next one uh, like a week or so ago with Matt and Courtney. It's the okay. Bridgewater Triangle. Yes. Uh, the term was coined in 1983 by Lauren Coleman, who noted all the strange paranormal happenings in his book, Mysterious America. Okay. So the points of the triangle are roughly, I'm going to 
butcher this name. I can help you out. Rehoboth? Rehoboth, yeah. Rehoboth. It looks like Rehoboth. Yeah, it's Rehoboth. That's where where I used to live in Massachusetts. I know this. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Abington and Freetown, Massachusetts. So it's some people believe those really aren't the borders, that it's actually a broader area, but this Mm -hmm. is a pretty big area to begin with. So it has all kinds of what was that? Our friend, our friend Tim Weisberg from uh, Spooky South Coast wants to bring us to the Freetown State Forest because he oh, says yeah. it, it's wild in there. Oh, I have some things on this. So All right, let's go. Some, some of the claims within the Bridgewater Triangle are paranormal ghost activity, uh, UFO sightings, mm. Bigfoot, Thunderbirds, strange orbs of light, satanic cult rituals, and murders. That's just Eesh. a few. So within... The Bridgewater Triangle lies the Hockamock Hock- Swamp. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, that one I couldn't help you with. <laughs> Hockamock Hock- or Hockamock? Mock- I don't know. Swamp. So mm-hmm. it's about 5,000 acres. The Wampango, Wampanga people believed it was a place where spirits dwell, both good and bad spirits. And when the English came the, to the area, they called it the Devil's Swamp. Oh, that's eerie. Yeah, one of the first UFO reports over the swamp was in 1908. Two men, they were undertakers, watched what they referred to as like a big or great lantern in the sky at night. And they saw saw it hover and fly for about 40 minutes. Mm. And then since then, there's been like numerous reports of UFOs and all kinds of weird lights in the area. Another location within Bridgewater Triangle is the Freetown State Park, as you were talking about. Yes. It's called the most haunted forest in the United States. Oh, that's wild. And there's all kinds of evidence of satanic activity and rituals in the forest. Mm -hmm. Um, They say there's been like human and animal sacrifice there. Yeah. Um, Several murders have taken place in the forest as well. Um, not sure if they were satanic or not, but a 15 year old girl named Mary Lou Art Arda Aruda was found dead and tied to a tree in 1978. Oh my god! So people where the satanic rituals have occurred, there's like a shack in the woods where they believe like some of like the satanic rituals and where they would meet and stuff. People hear screams and cries coming from that. Yeah where they were where these uh, rituals were performed <clears throat> you know i almost wish that we had no like known a little bit more about this because when we were on spooky south coast so we were down in that area we weren't far from there at all like well we totally you know when we were in by. foxborough yeah last may i had said oh i want to go to the bridgewater triangle but we just didn't have any time right yeah that was a very that was a quicker trip for everybody yeah so another weird little thing that lives in the forest, lives in many different forests, but it's also known for living here, is the Pugwudgies. Mm. They're believed to live in this area. They're small little trickster spirits, kind of like a fairy. and They do magic, but they can be like good or bad. Okay. Um, the forest also has had UFO sightings. Yeah. Ronald Reagan claimed to have seen mysterious lights in the sky over Freetown State Park, which is oh, wow. interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. So a lot of activity in the Triangle area is attributed to the King Philip's War. And this took place 1675 through 1678. It was between the indigenous people in the area and the mm-hmm. English colonists. And it was yeah. named for the chief who adopted the name Philip um, for whatever reason. I, I didn't have it written down. But anyways, it's you liked the, it. Yeah, it's the deadliest war in colonial history. So there's a lot of battlegrounds, a lot of people that were buried anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. Um, anytime there's a massive amount of deaths, there's always going to be a lot of lingering activity and all that. Sure. And people literally have dug up skeletons from that era in their backyard and stuff in this within this uh triangle this Bridgewater Triangle, and they think that's where some of this activity came from, was just this brutal war that was fought. I wonder with the Bridgewater Triangle, if some of it wasn't like, if it wasn't, if it wasn't always like that, or if it was like man-made through all of this tragedy. Well, the indigenous people in that swamp, they already like way long time ago, they already thought that there was something there, but they also thought it was good and bad. It wasn't like, you know, the 
English come in and they're like, oh, it's devil's swamp, you know? Yeah. But the indigenous people believed it was like, it could be bad and bring bad things, but it also could be good and be like, you know, abundant hunting for them to do. And they were, you know, well off and they had good harvest, things like that. It was good and bad. Right. But they believe spirits were there. Something was there. Yeah. Which is interesting. Very interesting. Definitely want to go because there's a lot more to it. I mean, there's all kinds. There's like state hospitals that are within the area that are like super haunted and all kinds of things. These were just like some more natural things. And there's just all kinds of weirdness that's gone on within mm-hmm. this confines of this triangle, which is yeah. crazy. It is crazy. So moving on to Vermont. Okay. This is the pig man of Vermont. Oh, right. <laughs> so the night before Halloween in 1951, a 17-year-old boy, Sam Harrison, left his house with a basket full of eggs. His plan was to basically inflict some Halloween tricks and pranks mm-hmm. with the eggs, but he was never seen or heard from again. Or was he? Mm. So... No one knew what happened to him. They never saw him again. And several, several years go by and a farmer heard someone rummaging around through his trash in his backyard. Mm. So he flips on the backlights and he saw a figure of a man who was naked and covered with white hair. And he had the face of a pig. Oh, so a couple of days after that incident, local high school was having this dance. Some of the teens were hanging out outside. And they claim they claim to have seen a same thing, a figure of a man, his body's covered with white hair, but they claimed he was wearing a hollowed out pig's head as like a mask. That's oh, how come they claim. Yeah, right. Horrifying, That's like right? One of my least favorite things in any scary movie is when somebody has a pig mask on. It is terrifying. terrifying. Do you think it's a real pig's head that's just been gutted and you're yeah, wearing it? That's no like way. that is legit horror movie right there. Yeah. So the teens were scared, obviously, and they ran away. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So some people believe this is Sam Harrison, the missing 17-year-old boy, which I'm okay. like, why, why do they why would they think that it was him? Like, I don't know why the yeah, connection is made that it's right. Sam. It's a small community, and I'm guessing because nobody went missing, nobody's gone missing, and then there's this stranger that they can't account for, Mm -hmm. so they're assuming, okay, it must be this guy, you know? Yeah. So, apparently some pigs also went missing, along with some cats and dogs, and the bones (laughs) were found in a cave at what is called the Devil's Wash Bowl. Okay. Um, So, did he eat these animals and wear the pig head as a mask? I don't know. Um, it's a weird one, Mitra. <laughs> I know it. What it reminds me of the Bunny Man. Like maybe it's something yeah. that could have actually been true, and this person just like lost their mind or something. And maybe mm-hmm. he had a plan. Maybe he took the eggs and he just said he was doing something for Halloween, and this was like his plan was to like go live in a cave and be Is a weirdo. It- is it possible that this person thought that they saw somebody with the face of a pig, but it was just like a man whose nose may have like, could have been like, you know, turned up a well, little like bit. Like on Seinfeld something. where he's like. Yeah, maybe something like that. I mean, James Gandolfini's kind of got a turned up nose a little bit like that Aww. where like his nostrils were showed. Well, he had RIP. Um, don't talk about poor James Gandolfini. No, I'm just saying like, it's like. Not on him a pig nose. Do. I don't think he has a pig nose. No, he has I'm a just... bulbous nose, but I don't think it's a pig nose. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just saying, I'm like wondering if like, it could have been somebody who saw something like that and they're, mm, I mean. But he was naked and covered with white hair. Well, he's also just a very hairy person. Who knows? You think it could have been just like a white suit, like a white fur suit? and people Who's wearing it? a white fur suit? I don't, like you, like a Sasquatch suit, right? That's a brown fur suit. This is just a oh. white fur suit, like a Yeti or something. Like a I white thought you Yeti. meant like like a guy like like was like, oh, let me see, what am I gonna wear tonight? Oh God, I've got like jeans, a plaid no. shirt. No, I'll put on my white fur suit. <laughs> no, what if okay. it's just like a, a costume? Like, okay, okay, okay. Like that white makes fur sense. suit, and then yes. he's got like I'm gonna hollow out a pig head for what reason? God, I do not know. So weird. Yeah, I don't. Well, the like thing any is, the pig man isn't a aggressive it's not like he's trying to go after people he's or taking your garbage he's a little hungry yeah so i mean it could be just some weirdo and he As just any- doesn't want to be identified so he's wearing something to make him look weird and then 
yeah. he's just taking your garbage and possibly your cats and dogs and eating right. them. Is it possible that this could have been man bear pig? Like, is that a, a possible man thing bear there? pig? Man bear pig. Yeah. What's that? Al Gore uh, predicted man bear pig on an episode of South Park where everybody had oh, to. No, had I don't to, watch. Had to South fear Park. man bear pig. Yeah, it was the latest cryptid man bear pig. It was the danger man to society. Bear pig. Yeah. You know, no. part man, part bear. I'm part trying pig. to picture it in my head. Well, you can look up images online. It gives quite a few illustrations of man bear pig. I don't really so. like South Park. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, that was, I, I feel like you're either episode. South Park or you're Simpsons, and I'm hardcore Simpsons. Oh, okay. So yeah. I didn't go to South Park. I mean, like, I was like kind of lukewarm to both. Like, I don't love either one of them more than the other. So, yeah. Just how it is. I guess that's just. I is. have one more for Vermont because it's just a, like I said, sometimes they're just short little nothing. Sure. Yeah. Let's hear it. So this is just a random urban <laughs> legend. So since it's so cold in Vermont, yeah. they say the people in Vermont are frugal. Okay. They want to save money. Yes. So in the winter, Bernie to, Sanders. To, yeah. To, in the winter to save money, to mm -hmm. save energy, yeah. they freeze their old people and then they thaw them out in the spring. Well, God, now I wish I thought we had, I wish that we had thought to ask Amanda this question earlier. Oh my so God. How random is that? Very random. That's just the urban legend. There's nothing else to it. They freeze their old people in the winter so they don't have to take care of them. And then they thaw them out in the spring, or at least they, they hope they can revive like them. Austin Powers style, I cryogenically guess. frozen. Like I, I think just put them out. Like it's freezing outside. They just like wheel them out. They freeze. Yeah, they keep them out there all winter. I mean, where yeah. are you going to put them? They keep them there all winter, or they wheel them to like the freezer box in the garage, and oh, then uh, spring That's comes, great. and I don't know. They put them in a warm bath and warm them up. I don't know they, what they're they've doing. They just got like a, a hall full of people that are frozen in carbonite, like Han Solo, and then they just like freeze. It's them like the Jedi museums. Oh, on spo display. Spoilers alert for anybody who isn't up to date on Kenobi, by the way. Too bad for you. Oh, too bad for you. But we spent a week. Today. That's what you get on an episode. Yeah. Seriously, people, watch it. Come on, you know you want to. <laughs> anyway, well, those were interesting. Pigman, very interesting. There's another. Was... There's other pigman. There's a pigman in New York, and we're gonna do a whole episode on New York. Yeah, and we'll talk about that pigman in New York. Okay. And let me tell okay. you, that one is creepy. Okay, well, I can't wait for that one. We'll be doing New York very soon. We'll be dedicating an entire episode to New York urban legends, so make sure you guys are listening up for that. But uh, that does it for this edition of Urban Legends in America, part number 16. And uh, we're thrilled that you guys have been here with us through 16 of these. And uh, we just have a few more left and we're very excited to bring them to you. But uh, for right now, if you want to follow along with all the stuff that we've got going on, the description of this show has all of our links. You can follow us over on Instagram, keep up with the daily reels. You can follow us on YouTube where we're uploading clips of the show every single week for you plus some random youtube shorts here and there um also we're still trying to stay active on tiktok and uh you know wherever you want to listen to the show and again you're listening to the show and you're enjoying it make sure you drop us a review and a rating it would be greatly greatly appreciated and if you have a story to share with us unrefined show at gmail.com but that's all we have this week on behalf of mitra and myself We'll catch you on the next episode of Unrefined. Hey, hey, hey.